Hi everyone, my name's Jordan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my May TBR. I've got 10 books on this list, but I've added a couple graphic novels and I also have some that I'm going to be listening to as audiobooks. So not too overwhelming by any means. Um, I'm hoping to get to all of these. Some of them I have to get to, so we'll see. So let's get into it. The first book I have on my list is The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. I think I might be able to finish this one in April. I've already started it. It is an arc I've gotten from NetGalley and I'm currently working on a May NetGalley reading vlog. So this is going to be in that vlog and I'm about 50% in. So I may finish this in April. It may not end up in my May wrap up, so we'll see. But I put it on here just in case I don't finish it this month. This is a fantasy novel that is going to be the first of a series, I believe. And it follows a woman who sells magical artifacts for a steep price. One day when she saves the Sultan's son from a djinn attack, she catches the notice of the Sultan. What she is dealing in is illegal. The Sultan recruits her to travel with her, his oldest son to go find this magical djinn artifact that will restore their barren lands. However, it will come at the cost of killing off all djinn. The Sultan's previous wife was killed by djinn, so he has a vendetta against djinn and his oldest son hunts them. So far I'm about 50% into the book and I will talk more about it in the vlog, but I'm really enjoying it so far. The setting is very magical and it is very immersive. I feel very connected to the whole setting and everything. The characters are well thought out. I'm enjoying their personalities and getting to learn all of that. So I think the book is good so far and I'm excited to continue. The next book on my list is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This is another of the arcs I have that will be in the May NetGalley reading vlog. Ava Reed wrote The Witch and the Woodsman, I believe is what it's called. And I didn't hate the book, but I didn't love it. I felt like it was a good debut novel, but it was not anything that is going to be something I remember years from now. However, I decided to give her another shot, see if her second book is better. And this book is set in the same universe, I believe, but with different characters. And it is a retelling of the story, The Juniper Tree. And from what I can tell, it looks really cute. I think what was successful in The Wolf and the Woodsman was the setting. I felt like her descriptions of the setting were really good and really in depth. And I'm hoping that this book also is has a great setting. I hope that I kind of feel more connected with these characters. The, the plot seems cool from the synopsis, so I'm excited to get into that. Next, we have the last book of my main NetGalley reading vlog, and that is Together We Burn by Isabel Ibanez. This is about a woman who is a flamenco dancer and her father is a matador of dragons, I believe. However, her father gets hurt in one of these fights with a dragon and she must try to continue the family legacy. Um, it sounds cool. I'm hoping that it, from the synopsis, it sounds a little uh, like it's going to read a little younger. So I'm curious to see if I enjoy it. The premise sounds cool. So I'm excited for that. Uh, yeah, excited to get into this one. Next, you know it's coming. I have Ship of Destiny by Robin Hobb. This is the third book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy. I finished Ship of Magic and Mad Ship this month so far. They are incredible. Honestly, superb. I will get more into them later in my wrap up and then I'm thinking I might do a series wrap up um, review at some point once I finish this third one. But Ship of Magic was incredible and I thought nothing could ever top it. And then Mad Ship came and also was incredible and I think better than Ship of Magic. So excited to get to this next one. I'm hoping it is even better than Mad Ship if that's even possible. Um, I'm really nervous for this one because Robin Hobb is not pulling punches when it comes to these characters. Her books to me ha always feel a little, always feel very character driven and I love that because I love character driven books and she is kind of brutal so <laughs> I'm nervous and excited for this last book in the series. Next up I have The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. 
This is the second book in the Bloodsworn saga, I believe it's called. This is after Shadow of the Gods, and I've talked about Shadow of the Gods in a few previous videos. I'm very excited for this. This was a pre-order that I had come in, and it is one, just such a good floppy paperback. Orbit is just the kings and queens of floppy paperbacks. I mean, like, incredible. So I'm very excited to read this. I will say, uh, Shadow of the Gods I liked, but I didn't love as much as other people did. Therefore, I don't remember a whole lot of what happened in Shadow of the Gods. And I was like, I need to find a really good recap of it so I can go into this. However, John Gwynn has provided a bunch of like, pr like, <laughs> like wrap ups of the first book. He's got like all the different characters, all the different terms. And then he has, then he has what has gone before. And it's like a whole recap of the previous book. All fantasy books should have this. As all the fantasy readers watching this know, sometimes fantasy books are very dense and have a lot of characters and a lot of world building. And if you read the previous book in the series, over a year ago, you're not going to remember what happened or you're not going to remember every detail. All fantasy books should have this. So I am, I was very intimidated to go into this book because I have high expectations for it and I was really worried I was going to have no idea what was going on for a while because I don't remember what happened in the last book. But now John Gwynn has done the work for me. So excited to get into this. This is a Norse inspired fantasy novel that is about a bunch of gods that have died millennia past I believe and it follows a bunch of people that are living in this kind of like barren world trying to cope and there are some greedy people that want to get at these gods bones because they have a lot of magic and can we just like appreciate this cover like stunning and the first cover is also incredible I don't own the first book because I had it as an arc and so I'm definitely going to get it so I can have these on my shelf because they're just stunning. Stunning. The next book on my list is The 1619 Project by Nicole Hannah Jones. This is a nonfiction book. In 1619, the first ship carrying slaves from Africa arrived on the shores of modern day America. and. It was the start of chattel slavery that lasted for over 250 years after that. So this book is a collection of essays that I believe are going to kind of talk about that specific time and the impact it has had since all the way up to current day. And I'm very excited to read this. I heard about it from Monet over on Life as Monet. I will link her channel down below. She has recommended a bunch of nonfiction books that I've read and all of them have been incredible. So I am excited to get into this one. I'm trying to read at least 12 nonfiction books this year and I think so far I'm at five. So I'm on track to get 12 done if I do one a month. So excited to get to this. Next up I have The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller. I looked up the synopsis of this book and I literally cannot decipher what it means. Um, from what I think it is, I think there's this woman named Charm who is kind of kept captive and she must tend to this bone orchard, which I believe is like trees that have ghosts in them or something. Guys, I literally have no idea. This synopsis was very confusing, um, but she... Uh, wants to be free and the king or whatever offers her freedom but in return she must like sacrifice all of these ghosts and stuff that she's been t caring for so I think uh, it sounds really cool sounds spooky I'm excited to read it I think this just came out like a month or two ago and I have it on hold with my library as an audiobook so excited to read that this month Next up, I have Count Your Lucky Stars by Alexander Belfleur. This is the third book in her romance trilogy. The first one was Written in the Stars. I don't remember what the second one was called, um, but both have been very good. Written in the Stars I talk about in my favorite romance books video, which I will link above. I haven't really looked at the synopsis for this one because I want to go into it without knowing what it's about. So I'm assuming it's going to be someone else that I've read about in the previous two books because this is a series where like you kind of see different people within this friend group get together, like a lot of romance books do, um, but I'm very excited for this. And the last two books I won't spend a lot of time talking about, I want to try to read um, the 64th and 65th volume of Naruto. 
I'm trying to finish Naruto and I keep putting it off because I have all these other books I'm really excited to read, but I'm so close to the end. There's 73 volumes, I think, and each volume doesn't take me that long to read, so I just need to commit. I just need to commit and finish them because I really want to read Heartstopper and I also want to try to read maybe One Piece? I don't know, One Piece is really intimidating, but I'm very interested in reading it. Oh, I also want to read The House Husband, uh, I don't remember the full title, but The House Husband manga. Uh, it looks incredible and it looks really funny and I've, I've seen the anime on Netflix. I haven't watched it, but I've seen it on Netflix, so I'm really excited to read that as well. So I just need to finish Naruto. I'm taking way too long to read it. I think because there's been kind of this slump. I'm in like the big final battle or what I think is the big final battle and it's just lasting so long and it's got that like typical anime manga thing where the villain like will have a full monologue about what they're about to do and I'm like I don't care just do it <laughs> and there's like a bunch of big reveals happening which are interesting but they're taking so long to get to the point that I'm just like come on so I just need to commit and I need to finish and so I can move on to the next graphic novel series so I'm gonna try to read 64 and 65 this month and that is all of the books I hope to get to in May. I will probably read more than that because I never really know what audiobooks I'm gonna pick up. Uh, physical books, I have like a very strict list I always stick to, but audiobooks, I just kind of like go with the flow and just go with whatever holds I have at the library or like a random list I have. Like, I don't really plan my audiobooks this much, so I'll probably read a few more than these. Really hoping I am able to get to all of the books I have listed, if not more because I have a lot of pre-orders about to come in and then I'm also going to have a June NetGalley reading vlog because I think I also have three arcs that come out in June. So there's a lot of books I need to read and I just need to get to them. Um, but I also have a lot of pre-orders coming in. Like I also got Fevered Star already and I don't even know when I'm gonna be able to read that and I'm like so pumped for it. So really just need to be reading at all times. <laughs> um, so that is all of the books and that is the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Of course, your support means the world to me. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let me know what you're hoping to read in May and if you've read any of these books. And until next time, thank you.